Hey guys, today I want to give you a few tips and hints on how to mount your tubeless tires onto your rims. Because uh, when I started using uh, tubeless tires, um, I struggled so hard uh, getting, getting the tires onto the rim and especially inflating uh, the tires. And yeah, um, so now I pretty much uh, have my routine uh, to mount them. And I want to tell you a little bit about it. So first of all, if you don't know exactly what a tubeless tire is, uh, there's basically three types of tires. Uh, first, there's the clincher tires, uh, which are probably most common. And it's probably what you will ride in training rides. And these consist of a uh, tube, uh, which holds the air, and then the tire around the tube, uh, which protects the tube against punctures. Then there's uh, the tubular tires, which were pretty common uh, for, for racing. These um, are basically tire and tube in one. So there's just one tube that uh, has uh, the rolling surface uh, built onto the tube. And then the full tube uh, is glued onto your rim. And then there's the tubeless tires, uh, which we will uh, talk about in this video. And these only consist of a tire, so they don't have any tube and uh, the tire is uh, mounted onto the rim and then sealed uh, uh, against the, the loss of air by, uh, yeah, by a sealant and by uh, the pure pressure of the air. And this is also what you have on car tires. Uh, they also don't have tubes. Uh, they just have uh, the tires uh, straight onto the rim. So what's the advantage of a tubeless tire? Uh, first of all, as you don't have uh, a tube inside of your tire, you, know, you don't have the friction between uh, the tube and the tire. So you have less resistance there, re less uh, rolling resistance. Then, as you can ride the tubeless tires with less uh, pressure on than um, with clincher tires or tubular tires, um, you also have a better comfort and better handling in turns. Better comfort because um, the lower pressure just uh, yields to you rolling over little bumps in the road, uh, which make, makes it much more of a comfortable ride. And then, um, the tubeless tires also work really well with uh, sealant, milk. Um, if you want any more deta details um, about the advantages of uh, tubeless tires, head over to the website of Schwalbe. I will uh, leave a link in the description. And yeah, there's more details um, of the advantages of why you should use tubeless tires as well. I'm really happy uh, with uh, the use of tubeless tires and um, I definitely feel the difference to uh, the time before when I used clinchers or uh, tubular tires. So what equipment do we need? First of all, of course, we need our tubeless tires. Uh, I personally ride the Schwalbe 1 Pro uh, and I'm really happy with them. Then we will need a rim tape to seal the rim uh, against losing the air. Then, uh, of course, we need uh, some valves. They are special uh, valves for tubeless tires. Then some fitting liquid, which will, which will help us uh, inflate the tires into the rim. Then uh, some sealant milk uh, against punctures. And probably the most important thing will be the tire booster, uh, which is basically uh, a compressor of air. So we inflate, uh, we, we put a lot of pressure into the booster up to uh, 11 bar. And then uh, we attach it to our uh, valve and we will have a really big flux of air into the tire, which we could, which we could never yield uh, with a regular pump. So this will be the key factor. Without that, you, you won't have any chance um, on road tubeless tires. You can also get um, all the things you need for mounting your tubeless tires in just one kit. It's called the uh, Tubeless Easy Kit. Uh, it comes from uh, Schwalbe as well. And uh, yeah, that's basically uh, your all-in-one set for mounting the tubeless tires. 
So in the beginning, we have to differentiate between uh, putting on a totally new tire out of the box and uh, using your uh, old tubeless tire um, and just, uh, for example, putting it back on after uh, you had to uh, switch it to another rim or something. If you are using a brand new uh, tubeless tire out of the box, uh, you will have the problem that it's it always comes folded in the box and then you will have these uh, folding marks on the tire and these folding marks uh, will make it really difficult uh, to inflate them onto your onto your rim this is why you really need to get those uh, folding marks out of the tire and the easiest way to do that uh, is just by uh, taking a regular tube and mounting your tubeless uh, tire with a inner tube, so you don't want to have that in the end, but uh, just to get rid of those marks, uh, put the tube on and then the use the tubeless tire as a regular clincher tire and uh, inflate it onto your rim and then maybe leave it on for uh, a few days, uh, maybe even ride on it a little bit. And by having the tube inflated into the tire, uh, those folding marks will disappear. If your tubeless tires have already been used, you won't have the problem with those uh, folding deformations. Uh, but you will have another problem, uh, and that is that there's always some some of the sealant milk um, or of the uh, mounting liquid uh, will be on the sides of the tubeless tire, and these uh, the the rest of these um, liquids and and the milk they will clump up. And you will have all these uh, small clumps um, of the old material there, and these will also hinder you in uh, in having having it really sealed with the with the uh, rim. So you want to get these uh, clumps of old milk away, uh, really clean it, uh, scrub it off, um, however you want it, but make sure it's really clean. They if you have uh, if you have some of these clumps uh, still on it will make it almost impossible uh, to inflate the tire onto, to, onto the rim because you really um, have to, you have, to uh, have it sealed. So let's get all our equipment ready and then we start. The first things we need uh, is our tubeless valves and probably when you have a, a larger uh, rim you will also need some extensions uh, for your rim because the tubeless valves are typically too short um, for the for the whole of your rim. So with the small tool, uh, which you can also see on the lower right of the picture in the upper left, um, with that tool you can unscrew the actual valve um, out of your out of the cylinder of the the whole valve. And then uh, you, when you unscrew your uh, actual valve, then you can put the extension in and then put the valve in again on top. Then you can take your valve and extension and put it into your rim. And then you need the uh, nut uh, which comes with your valves and secure it from the other side of the rim. So it uh, really has to stick into your uh, rim tape there to seal it against loss of air. Now you can uh, really put the tire on to your rim and make sure uh, it sits nicely on, on your rim because uh, you don't uh, want to have any bumps uh, or anything uh, in, in the tire after you mount it because then you have to do the whole procedure again. So now we have to uh, put out the valve again. So just the the valve itself, not the not the cylinder of the the whole valve, which, which you would usually call the valve, but just the the uppermost top of it, where the actual valve is. Then we can take our uh, tire booster, and believe me, you won't have any chance uh, without a tire booster or anything uh, like it. Uh, you won't be able to inflate the tire with just a regular uh, road bike pump. So we inflate uh, or we put a lot of air into the tire booster. We pump it up to um, around 11 bar and then we have a lot of air in the tire booster. 
Now we want to make sure that uh, when we inflate our tire that it actually pops into, into the rim. So the tire has to hold the air just by the air pressure inside the tire. And this is really finicky. So uh, what helps with that is this, this uh, fitting liquid, which is uh, basically uh, just uh, some liquid that will uh, evaporate um, after a few minutes. So we put that um, onto the sides of our rim uh, or on the sides of our tire in between so that there's um, a layer of liquid in between the rim and the tire which will uh, make it eas easier for the uh, tire to actually seal against loss of air. And you will notice if you ever do it without it, um, the air will just uh, go out of the tire um, on the side of the rim or the side of the tire because um, there's always little bumps. Uh, it's not always really even, not totally even. So um, that will probably not work. So we'll, you will definitely uh, want to have this uh, fitting liquid on the sides of your tires. Next up, we take our tire booster and uh, attach it to our valve, um, or uh, better, it's just the uh, cylinder of the valve. The valve, uh, we removed the valve before, of course. Uh, screw it on, so uh, it's really tight. Then you open the valve of your tire booster and a lot of air will flow into your tire in a very short time. So uh, with that uh, really high flux, the tire will hopefully uh, pop into your rim and hold really uh, tight there. So you will notice if you if you grab it that it, it feels like uh, it's supposed to feel uh, when a tire is on, on your rim. In this step uh, it should go really easy because you don't have the valve in. But if it doesn't work here uh, you can scroll a little further in the video and then I will have some tips uh, if it doesn't pop. Then you just uh, unscrew your uh, tire booster from your uh, from the cylinder of of your valve. Then of course all the air will flow back out of the of your uh, tire. But the purpose of this first step um, was to make sure that the tire um, is really popped into your uh, into your rim. So it, it's already in the right position uh, and that makes it easier to not have any uh, gaps in between the tire and the rim. Uh, so because uh, later we will need to um, pump the air in through the uh, through the actual valve, and that then we will have a lower flux of air. And with uh, lower flux, uh, it's also more difficult to actually uh, have enough uh, speed of the air to really pop it in. And uh, that's why we want to have this, want to do this first step. That's uh, actually not in in the manual a lot of the time. So you should really try that. So next up, uh, we want to put the seal milk into the tire. And uh, I always, uh, you want to start with having the the cylinder of the valve on the bottom of your wheel. Put the sealant milk in. And then afterwards you can uh, screw in the valve again, so you actually have it sealed. And then you can move it by 180 degrees, we move your wheel by 180 degrees, so you have the valve facing downwards um, out of your wheel. This is very important because uh, you don't want to have um, a lot of milk around when you uh, pump in the air again because uh, the milk might uh, affect the flux of air uh, uh, around the area of the of the valve. I always hang my uh, wheel somewhere uh, during these steps because I really don't wanna, uh, want anything to touch the actual tire so it stays in the same position uh, that we managed to put it on uh, in the first step. Uh, because if you uh, grab onto the tire or uh, put it onto the floor, your tire might just deform again and then it will be more difficult to pop it into the rim again. So now we come to the last and probably most difficult step. Uh, we have to reattach the tire booster, uh, which we inflated uh, in the meantime. We have to reattach the tire booster to our valve. 
Uh, of course, now we have the valve screwed in, so uh, it will be a little more finicky there. What I always do um, that is that I uh, uh, detach the metal uh, thing from the tire booster and screw it onto the valve first. Um, so screw it over the actual valve and then make sure that the valve is still open. Because uh, sometimes you can lock your, um, lock your valve uh, while screwing on the tire booster. And that of course uh, you, you don't have any flux of air into your tire. Then I attach the uh, actual tire booster to the metal thing. And hopefully if it's all really uh, tight and there's, there's no gaps in between, you can uh, open the tire booster again. And if it all works fine, um, your tire will pop again. And this time we have the valve in. So um, all the functionality of your, of your finished uh, tire wheel system is already there. So the, if you unscrew the tire booster from your valve, the air will stay in this time. And then you have a, a fully functional tubeless tire onto your wheel. What I always uh, struggle with a little bit is uh, when I attach the tire booster to the valve that uh, when screwing it on, you have to make sure that you don't lock your uh, valve with the tire booster. So you can look through if you just have the, the small part, look through and make sure that, it's, that the valve is actually open. And then when you uh, unscrew your tire booster, make sure that you don't unscrew the whole valve, uh, which we did earlier. Uh, that can also sometimes happen and then of course all the air comes out. Sometimes you can just uh, grab in uh, to the valve and fix it a little bit to, uh, against uh, screwing it out of, your, out of the cylinder. In general, don't be demotivated uh, if it takes uh, some more tries for you to, to actually mount the tire. I think when I did it the first time, I wasn't able to do it for like 10 times and maybe on the 11th, uh, I actually managed it. But um, after doing it a few times uh, and gaining some practice, uh, it's actually working almost all the time for me now uh, when I use all those uh, hints and uh, tips that I uh, worked out during that time. I hope I could help you a little bit with these tips and hints uh, for mounting your uh, tubeless tires on your own. And if you have any more questions, just leave them down in the comments. I hope I will be able to answer them. And then see you next time.